Reverend Rose, to give you my two cents on this, I think that what has occurred since uh, the 1954 uh, decision is that we have failed to teach our children about their heritage and about their history, and we are depending on someone else to do it. When we start looking at black history or white history, we don't have that in our homes anymore. Kids don't realize the struggles that a lot of our parents went through because they're on easy street. As uh, Mr. Taylor said, when children want something nowadays, if they holler and cry and scream loud enough, they will get it. Praise the Lord. But what has occurred over the integration period is that a lot of our African-American friends and, and, and parents have thought for just one moment that they have arrived. But they have not arrived. When they go to the bank to borrow $1,000, they find out that they have not arrived. We sometimes believe that since we're able to migrate into uh, middle-class neighborhoods, that we have arrived. And as a result of that, we no longer teach our children about Rosa Parks, or do about Dr. Martin Luther King. And we expect the schools to do it. Well, that's not the school's responsibility. That's not something that they pick up in textbooks. That's something that they should pick up at their homes and also in their churches and in their communities. So in, in order for our history to be promoted, every racial uh, group that I know of promotes their own culture. That's right. Every one of them. So why can't African Americans promote their culture? In their own way. So sometimes I think that, that it's our fault as an African American that we believe by either being true or not true that we have, a, we have arrived because we've got a few initials behind our names. And we've got a little bit of money in the bank. And we've got a fine car. But if we look deep enough, we're one payment for being in the poor house. Thank you. Uh,